if, 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 if nobody knows about zero turnaround, so they, they, they are basically a company who did uh, some kind of very clever stuff on, on in production servers, uh, how to deploy Java code to a production server uh, in a matter of seconds in a way that there is no downtime, time, which is a huge pain in the ass for the, uh, for the big companies who have huge systems. And they opened the... Uh, uh, an office uh, next to Tartano, uh, an office in Boston, and our president went to open it uh, for the celebrations. But before we come to that, I wanted to ask about your motivations. How the hell did you get to this idea, and why did you start with that and, uh, at all? Oh. <laughs> so, well, you know, it started randomly as every other thing, but, you know, probably one interesting thing about that was that. It wasn't done for the money. I wasn't like dreaming of the riches. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, um, I wasn't in it to become Bill Gates. Uh, I really, I had a, you know, we had a big issue. Uh, it was painful. I was at that time was the, uh, working in the now Nortel, then uh, with Media, uh, as the weird position of research and development uh, director. And uh, basically, my job was to solve problems. And there was, you know, one big problem that was generally felt in the Java development was that it was so damn slow. And I just, you know, I was thinking, I think I found a way to accelerate it a great deal. And that kind of gave rise to everything else. But really, it was always, you know, about pain and about solving that pain. Okay. And, and, and um, so basically, you chose this idea because you had the need for that yourself. Yeah, yeah. Today, you know, you, today I, it's interesting actually how much you grow with time because, like, today if I would be in the same position, you know, I, I would probably think about starting right away starting a startup and, like, kind of building this business around it. But then it was more like, you know, then I was a software development with a pain. And, uh, but I think, like, you know, thinking backwards, I was, uh, in a way, it was a great start because, A, B, I, I really believed in it. I wasn't doing it for the money. I was, I had a, you know, I had a passion, I had a vision, like, how to solve it. And it was a very hard problem. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like some another mobile app. It wasn't another social something or local or whatever, which is, you know, which is uh, kind of they're they're hard to sell, but they're easy to make comparatively. So it was something that was really hard to make. So it had a huge barrier of entry. It was really hard to reproduce, which meant that I could take my sweet time to build it out. I could get my audience. I could get my community around it, and you know, build something of real value over time. So that's. So basically, you didn't want to build another muffin app, as, as we heard I, yesterday. I, <laughs> <laughs> yes, muffin. I guess is. Uh, there's actually. Um, uh, yeah, the, I, I guess it's a good word. Um, but, but <laughs> exactly. Um, who, didn't, who wasn't here yesterday, we have a new term for a uh, uh, lame app, uh, or startup idea, it's called muffin app, but, uh, for, to find a no next muffin store or something like that. Anyway, uh, but so you started up, um, uh, you were backed by, by the company actually worked in. Yeah. Um, now they were bought out and they got a thousand time return or something on that. And, uh, and yeah. what's the perspective? What's next? Ooh, wow. Okay, uh, so many things. So yeah, so now we, you know, we uh, now now we are the, the the company that we started with was bought out. So uh, I guess next, right now, we kind of we're kind of graduating. We're becoming we're turning from a startup to a company without stopping being a startup. It's a tricky thing. So uh, whereas our first product, the one we developed five years ago, it's now got into the point where you know last year we sold. Uh, two and a half million dollars uh, worth of it, and this year we're trying to grow it three to four times. So, and that's you know that's a pretty pretty decent revenue stream. <laughs> and now on top of that, we're trying to you know we started the second product which we released last year, and now it's starting to picking off steam as well. So uh, now we kind of have this grand vision where we want to uh, we re really want to make uh, develop like kind of developing, testing, and deploying a software application first of all on the Java platform and then kind of a different platform really, really easy. Like, we want to build, we want to build consumer grade software for the enterprise. Yeah. So this is kind of one of our vision. We want to really make it as so simple that people would, you know, blink and stare at it, blink and like, oh my God, I can't believe my eyes that it's now so simple. It was, it took me a week before and now it takes a second. Right. And we, we got that, you know, we got that the first time with the first soft piece of software. Now the second product is uh, pretty much in that uh, category as well. And we have kind of more long-term vision of building more pieces into that puzzle. Okay, so basically the idea is that you wouldn't want to would want to continue on the stream of of not uh, uh, producing vitamins but painkillers really wonderful. Uh, so, but tell me something. Um, I can understand that that that, that there are 
probably several other um, or, or thousands of, of uh, software engineers uh, trying to get their head around very complicated problems, not to do a next mafia, but really solve some, something which is, has not been solved before. But when you get it done, we heard, for example, from Denis Liebamega that he, he started to basically send his prototypes to the, to the, the, the opinion leaders. And, but how did you start selling? Because it, it, it has to be, a, uh, okay, obviously you had a very good product, but, but how did you do your marketing and how did you grow so big? This is a great uh, question, actually. So, funnily enough, uh, and, and this is like really weird, but we are considered to have some of the best marketing in the industry. Uh, the way it happened is because we didn't have a single marketing person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, because we didn't have a single marketing person, you know, we didn't make any of the, uh, we didn't make any of the traditional marketing. You know, the only thing we did, which was traditional, we went to events. We didn't buy any advertising. We didn't do any press. What we did is create a great product, and uh, then basically we started creating uh, great content. Uh, we started a blog. Uh, we, we, we basically uh, started writing interesting articles, not about our products, just generally. Uh, we started uh, making screencasts. We started making all kind of useful things. We started you basically just became the opinion leaders there. Basically, we became opinion leaders. It took a while, but uh, we were damn good, so people liked us. <laughs> and, uh, and eventually, you know, and, and basically got for free what other guys, you know, they spend a lot of money on. And that, that allowed us basically to be profitable very, very quickly. Uh, I mean, the first two years, we were kind of in a, in a flux. But, like, after that, we were pre pretty much profitable uh, and uh, at, at a healthy, like, 30% margin pretty soon. So... So like and, uh, and and basically for a long time we only had this free and then it's, and then like basically last year when we grew to this point then we understood that now we can start scaling it so now we needed you know we 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 had a software which sells we had a great market and now we needed to scale it now we needed to turn you know to be able to turn it 10x bigger than 10x bigger whatever 2x 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 doesn't matter and uh, then we started actually getting some real marketing in the game. And the real marketing is built the way that it's still built all around what we call the Writers Guild. So we have internally in the company, we have the Writers Guild, where in engineers, marketing guys, and sales guys participate, which basically uh, the goal is to produce content uh, and to produce valuable, good, amazing content. Uh, and then around that, all the marketing efforts are built. Uh, all the ads, they don't go, like for example, we don't promote the products, we promote content. Uh, we don't, uh, like, uh, we build all kind of weird things, like we built the conference geek out, uh, which is uh, happening actually next week. It's in Tallinn. We, there's uh, 250 people. And it's kind of part of, like, very strange part of our market marketing effort, <laughs> and which we also plan to expand to other localities. So, so we did, you know, we did all kind of the wrong things, which nobody else did, and, uh, <laughs> and oh, somehow yeah. it all worked. And also last year, we actually... Uh, well, one thing we never knew how to do is uh, actually sell. We never had a single sales guy in, in, in the company until the last year. And last year we brought actually an amazing sales guy um, who helped, and uh, along with the VC actually, we, because the VC that bought out with media, they're great at building sales organizations. And they helped us build this inside sales. And uh, the interesting part is for us, inside sales, they're not like a classical sales guys, they're connectors. So we, build, we have a great product, we have customers, and we have management which buys it, and, and users who use it. And the goal of the sales guys is A, to connect users to the product, and then help users convince management to buy it, right? <laughs> so that's, they're, they're connectors. Because of that, for example, they didn't get any commission. Like, we don't pay commission to sales because we see them as connectors, but obviously if they perform great, then they get, you know, higher salary. Oh my God! Um, okay, this this is okay. I didn't even know how to know to, how to ask the next question. This is pretty amazing. Okay, but before we go to the Boston, uh, Boston Tartu thing, um, I'd like to come back to the first panel you were in, um, and and everybody in the panel basically brought you out that hey, you are an outlier and and and, and you are an exception. Uh, when compared to the others because of the term machines. So tell me about this VC deal a bit more. Okay, so uh, one of the things I actually don't like about the modern startup culture is that people don't understand that raising money is the last possible thing you do. It's when you exhausted every other possible options, that's when you go and raise money. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's exactly like if you have a company, you hire a guy if you don't have, you know, if you can't handle it with the existing team. You don't hire a guy just because you want to hire a guy. There needs to be a need. It's same with money. Like, first thing, like, you know, the reason why we maybe, you know, uh, it's not maybe the reason why we were an exception, but one of the reasons, like, and this is what I love about Estonia. Estonia is so frugal. We get done so much with so little cash compared to the same U.S. Like, when we, when we expanded operations to U.S., we actually went uh, into minuses for a few months oh. because the U.S. is so damn expensive. 
So Estonia is great. Estonia is frugal. You can really build a lot here with very little money, and you shouldn't raise money. You, you, it's, it, like, don't forget that the startup game is not about uh, raising money. The startup game is about getting customers and getting cash. This is, this is what you're building. You're building a company, you're building something, uh, you know, and you're building something. And, and the way, actually, to be an exception, the way to be sure that you don't need the money is to choose a problem which is actually valuable. Choose a hard problem which you need solving, which needs a lot of, you know, which is hard, which you, you alone, you know, know how to solve, and you alone will put the effort into solving. Like this Kino Technic is a great example, I think. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing company. And they, they're for the same reason they were in this position, that, you know, they, don't, they never raise money, I think, even. Uh, he, he borrowed from his best friend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, so the reason why they never needed money is because they had something of great value and because they were very frugal about building it. This is the way to... And, and the, if, if you build your company like that, then when you will raise money, because you don't need it, because you're so frugal, you'll be in that position to negotiate. You'll be in that position to raise money at great terms. You'll be at that position not to have milestones you know, imposed on you. So you'll be in a position to choose. You'll be in control of your own fate. So basically, the best way to fundraise or, or to raise money is to do it from customers. The best way is customers. Like, uh, there's actually a great story about Evernote. Like, when Evernote basically ran out of money and they were like, uh, you know, they were... Uh, basically, had to they were going to close the doors, and then they just emailed everybody, all the customers that you know, guys, we're such a hard position, we're probably going to have to close our doors in a few. Then, basic, uh, then the guy, I think from Sweden or something, uh, called them up and said, you know what, I'm going to give you a million dollars. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so that's, that's a great story. You know, if you, if you build something that customers love, they're going to pay for it. If you solve a real problem, people are going to pay for it. This is, you know, this is the way to raise money. This is the best ever way to raise money. I'm not a big fan of uh, startups which, you know, which basically generate a lot of pages in the hope that uh, Facebook will acquire them. I, I, think, I think this is, you know, th I, I don't do, I'm not even a big fan of Facebook. I don't think Facebook creates a lot of value. Uh, I'm a big fan of, real, you know, of something that solves a great problem. And for those guys, it's not going to be a problem to raise this money. You should get to biotech at some point and cure cancer. Anyway, uh, <laughs> tell, tell me something. Uh, why did you go from Tartu to Boston? And how, how, big are you, uh, how big is your company in, in headcount now? So we have, uh, we have 62 people, I think, from uh, last Italian Monday. Uh, probably on, on, on next Monday, we, we do the Italian Monday, so next Monday probably going to be a couple more. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> that's just how it goes. Uh, we have about 40 people in Estonia, about 20 people in Boston. And the reason we went to Boston is, A, because our VC was in Boston. They had a network there. Uh, they got us a great sales guy. Uh, who grew, built, built an organization, we moved our marketing there because we wanted the marketing uh, to be next to our sales. Okay. And, and so now the sales, marketing, and operations are in Boston, and uh, engineering and product and uh, product and infrastructure is in Estonia. Uh, but, but you're a CEO in Estonia. I'm the CEO in Estonia. I have a great guy, COO, in uh, Boston. So. Okay. How, uh, how does it work? Is it... So far, it works great. I'll ask me in a year. I'll tell you more. <laughs> Great. Uh, our time is up, so just to keep myself also in the time limits, I'm going to call it off now. It was a pleasure to have you here. Give a big applause to Evgeny.